Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video and Ramadan Mubarak to all my 2 billion brothers and sisters Muslims all around the world in this holy month of Ramadan so now let's get started with our journey or adventure and by the way I'm also fasting today so in fact this month right this whole month but anyways so let's get going all right shall we uh, Alright, so I have my projects folder here and I'm just going to create a new project and how you create a new project You're going to create a folder and Let's call our project whatever you want in my case. This is what I'm calling it. It code taco image viewer uh, Just like that. There you go Let's go inside of it and here I'm going to show more options and open with code There you go Now I opened the visual studio code. Let's go now let's control back tick to open up a terminal and now we're going to say zig init dash exe to initialize a project in this directory and there you go zig have generated some boilerplate code you know uh kind of like the hello world of zig <laughs> uh all right so if you zig build run you get it just compiles and links and it will run it there you go we got all your code base are belong to us there you go run zig build test and you can also say zig run zig build test okay zig build test but nothing happened there all right fine anyways so here's what i'm gonna do I'm going to go to actually let's actually initialize the github repo in this directory so git init and git edit git <laughs> git init right in there you go all right now we have initialized the zig repo now let's go ahead and uh, let's see let's see let's see uh, I'm also gonna create a git ignore file dot git ignore and we're basically gonna ignore git zig cache and zig out there you go all right amazing now let's go ahead and create a new directory i'm gonna call it call i'm gonna call it lips right and i'm gonna cd into that directory cd libs and now you're going to go to the raylib uh, libraries uh, github repo and we're going to copy the link we're going to say get some module add and paste in the link oops i made the typo right there sub module and it's going to take a bit of time and so I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna come back when it's done. All right, so it is done as you can see here. Now we have Raylib uh, repo in locally, right? So what's next? Now let's go back, let's make sure that we are in the, in the top level directory and let's go to build.zig, right? And let's actually go ahead, const Raylib build equal to well sorry really build is equal to import right and we're going to import libs slash relib slash src slash build.zig uh, but be careful here uh, I, we don't want the build.zig that is inside of the top level directory for relib library no we want the one that is inside of src okay interesting so now we got our relib uh, build file now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually build raylib so const raylib is equal to raylib build dot add raylib you're gonna give it here the build file or, or the build uh, object and then here you're gonna give it a target and you're gonna give it the optimize options and there you go now we should be able to build raylib now let's link uh, Raylib to our exe or executable. So exe.link uh, library. 
and link Raylib. There you go. All right, now that should be enough. Now let's go ahead to main.zig. Let's remove all this trash. Let's remove the tests. And by the way, I don't even need the tests here too. So uh, I'm not gonna be using tests. Okay, fine, there you go. Okay, amazing. So now, we don't need this, all right, amazing. Now we have our main function. Let's first of all import Raylib is equal to import Raylib, just like that. Uh, actually, no, <laughs> because Raylib is a C library. We're going to say C import, okay? And we're going to say... Now, basically, when you're inside of C import, uh, Zig goes ahead and creates a a buffer for you where you can actually import, include, you know, and define macros, etc., for a C library. Now, ideally, you would like to have one C import for performance reasons, you know, but if you, let's say, have two libraries that have conflicting names or conflicting macros or something like that, then you can surely go ahead and actually uh, do multiple C imports. There is no problem with that. Okay. So now let's say C include Raylib dot H just like that. And that should hopefully include Raylib for us. Now I can say C dot init, uh, init window. Okay. Now, unfortunately, uh, while recording this video, there was, there is a bug currently in the compiler in Zig uh, that doesn't allow the ZLS VS Code extension the, to do autocomplete on C imports for some reason. Uh, but it is actually the fix is ready. It just needs it just waiting for the uh, for it to be accepted by the core team basically. But anyways. So C dot init window, and here we're basically using Raylib. Okay, so if we go to libs, and uh, if we go to Raylib dot h, where is Raylib dot h? SRC, Raylib dot h. There you go. So now let's search for init window. There you go. So it needs the width, height, and title. So width. Let's say 720, or let's say actually 800, 600. And that's the width and the height and the title. You can, by the way, choose whatever title, width, height, whatever, doesn't matter. So um, let's call this code a taco image viewer. Just like that. Now, oh, sorry, by the way, I want to call this C, okay? I just call it C which stands for the language C basically. So yeah, so C dot init window. Now I'm gonna say defer C dot close window. So when when we reach the end the, the end of the scope, it will go ahead and call close window, okay? And that should hopefully be it. Let's say zig build uh, run and make sure everything is working out. It should go ahead and compile Raylib and link Raylib, compile our executable and link our executable, etc. So the zig build run. Okay, so C import failed because Raylib.h is not found. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing is that we need to add into main.zig, I think, or actually hold on a second. If we go to the to the to the Raylib build.zig that is in the top level directory, you can say that you can say install header, okay? So if we see this install header, basically give it a compile step, src path, and the dst rel path. Um, Okay, I guess let's try it. Let's go to build.zig. I didn't actually do it this way uh, before, but let's just see. 
Let's go back to build that deck. Lib dot install install header. Actually, I'm not gonna be doing it this way. Okay, I'm just gonna do it the way I, I've done it before. So xc dot include path. Okay, include add include path. Let's go. And here you're just gonna say lib slash raylib slash src. You know, just to include that path for includes basically. If that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, fine. So now it should hopefully work out. If I'm not mistaken. And there you go, it's building. Nice. And it's done. It's it's pretty fast at building stuff. Uh, so yeah. And by the way, there is no binding here. We're actually calling into C files directly and we're building it with using Zig itself. So you only need Zig and Git in this case. So yeah, see the init window. There you go. As you can see, a window got popped up and then basically it exited the application. Now let's go further and let's say while, uh, let's actually open up the, man, I don't know why it actually quits. So relive.h, where is it? I'm so bad at, there you go. Okay. Can I somehow, I don't know. Pin. Okay, pin. All right, um, I pinned it. <laughs> All right, nice. So window should close. So I'm going to check for window should close right here. So while um, while window should close. C, of course, C dot window should close. I think while not window should close and that gives us a Boolean value. Okay, interesting. And let's see if that works out by any chance. Error root struct of file. No member named window should close. What? Oh, I think I have to give it the what? Hold on. Really? I'll see window should close. Huh? What? <laughs> this is super weird. Window should close. Oh. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I missed the L right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Okay, fine. So zig build run. Oh my god. All right, there you go. We have a window, but it's not really pulling events and it's not rendering anything. So let's make sure to say C dot begin draw and defer C dot end draw. Oopsies. Now just bear with me because I have a microphone in front of me, which is pretty annoying. But anyways, sig build run. Now I think I misspelled it again. <laughs> Begin. Oh yeah, begin drawing. Man, why? Just why? <laughs> drawing. I N G. Make sure to do that. Zig so build run. All right, there you go. As you can see right now, it's actually rendering something, and the window is responsive. Now, how I can make it resizable? Pretty easy. C dot. Uh, and just so I don't misspell it again, let's look for config. Uh, I think init config, if not mistaken. Well, I, I am mistaken. Config init, maybe? What? Oh, man. Hmm. Let's look for config, though. Yeah, there you go. Sit config flags. Okay. Sit config flags. If I had autocomplete, we would have already been done with this stuff, but well, there you go. And the flags, let's look for the flags too. Man, so annoying. 
there you go this is all the flags that you can actually put there now uh, I want in my case I want the window to be able to be resized so C dot flag window resizable and also I want let's see I want something else I remember vsync right vsync I want the vsync all right c dot or c dot flag vsync hint and there you go now that should be fine zig build run and there you go now we're able to be resize to, to resize the window and of course we enabled the vsync nice amazing so now i want to be able to Lloyd textures and to be able to do that now I'm gonna create a block just for drawing okay uh, this is basically rendering or drawing we could call it like that okay fine and then we could have a block for updating stuff or actually there's no need for now for for a block Okay, but drawing, it's important for me. Well, not too important, but for I like to code it in this way since I have this defer. I like when the drawing code is done, it will basically go ahead and automatically end drawing. All right, so that's why I'm doing it like that. Okay, so right now, I'm going to check if there is some files that got dropped. Okay, so if it's file dropped, now if it's file dropped, Oopsies. Or C dot is file dropped. Now I believe this will give me a, a Boolean value as you can see here. Now if that's the case, we're going to load the dropped files. Okay, so const dropped files is equal to Lloyd dropped files. Of course, C dot Lloyd dropped files. Now, now this dropped files it actually gives back a file path list, as you can see here. Uh, it have a capacity, account, and uh, array of chars, uh, like array of char pointers, basically array of strings, C strings to be exact. Um, so, how we're gonna deal with this? Well, for a for loop and we're gonna say zero up to drop files dot count okay and we basically it's gonna be the index here all right amazing now the dropped file is equal to dropped files index and there you go and that's pretty much it. okay now let's try to actually debug and print that dropped file just so I can show you what's going on here so yeah like this like this dropped file and there you go okay interesting let's try this out I guess Sig build run. Now we have a problem. Element access of non indexable type. Now, a char pointer is not indexable because it doesn't have any bounds. Okay. Uh, so, how we can deal with that? Well, uh, we need to basically get a, a slice. All right. So, how we can get a slice? Well,. Well, well, well. I think maybe we could, if I remember well, maybe we could do something like this. Oh yeah, but we cannot do it like that. Const dropped files slice is equal to C, uh, sorry, dropped files, the slice of zero up to dropped files dot count. I think. Yeah, there you go. Now let's try to actually, instead of index and stuff like that, let's just say dropped file slices 
And here, I think we're going to get our dropped file directly, right? So, yeah. Uh, dropped file dot. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on a sec. <laughs> I've done something wrong here. Uh, actually, here, make sure to add the path right there. Now, this will give us the path, okay? Dropped file path. Because, in fact, dropped files is just a struct, okay? That contains the count and the path array thing. So, yeah, pretty much. Amazing. Now, let's try this up. Dropped file path. Zig build run. And let's see if it's going to work out. There you go. Now, let me try to... By the way, I don't need this anymore. I have a file here. Let's see what's going to happen. Oopsies. So, what's happening? Oh, by the way, we didn't enlow the dropped files. That's why it's keeping on actually printing the path. That's why we should make sure to do that. The fur. See the enlowed uh, dropped files. And uh, let me make sure that's its signature. There, you, go. you actually have to give it the struct, right? So dropped files, there you go. Now we're deferring it until the end of this block right here. Zig build run. And let's try again. Let's have this thing. And, and, and as you can see, it printed the path that I have here. Now, if I actually take all of those images or all those files, you're going to notice that it's going to print all of them, although it doesn't actually add a new line, okay? But you got the point, basically. So, yeah, it's working. Now we're getting a file path. Okay, so now I basically need an array, which I'm going to store in the, the textures that I'm going to load, okay? So basically how I can do that. Well, we need a array list. So, and before we can even create an array list, we need some sort of allocator or a buffer or a constant buffer. And that's what's pretty amazing about Zig because is that you have total control over even the uh, allocators that are used for each and every object in the standard library. So if it wasn't for Raylib that doesn't care about giving an allocator, etc., <laughs> our application can run even on embedded environments, okay? Which is pretty amazing, all right? But anyway, for now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just uh, use the C allocator, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, let's see. So I think const const arena. I'm going to create an arena. And why an arena? Now there is a lot of uh, allocators and you can look up the documentations of Zig and you're going to find all of the information. But let me see first of all actually a cd dot and I need the arena allocator I think. But I'm I guess it's inside of heat, right? There you go. Array allocate arena allocator in it and then you give it the the parent allocator or the child allocator they're calling it. But anyways, uh, in my case, I'm just going to give it the C allocator here. Now I'm going to about to explain this stuff. Okay. So we have an arena here, an arena allocator that we're trying to initialize using the C allocator because we're already linking with the C library. Uh, that's why we can actually do this. But if we didn't link with the C library, but since we're linking into a, a, a C library, that means it's already doing that for us. So we can actually use the C allocator. Now there's also a Zig general allocator, but since we already have, we're already linking to libc anyways, so let's just do that. All right, so the arena allocator can basically allocate just like malloc and, and stuff like that. But the thing is, the catch is that you cannot free an individual element, at least not it's not made for that, you know? So it's made for where you basically just keep on adding elements and then maybe even pop elements. It's kind of like a stack. And basically you can free all of the elements at once. This is what an arena allocator is really made for, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now, 
let's grab an allocator. So allocator is equal to arena dot allocator. So basically you create some allocator, then you can take sub allocators and pass it around to your application stuff. Okay. Now in my case, it's a basic application. Uh, but by the way, whenever you say init, you have to say the init. So defer arena dot d init. There you go. All right. Amazing. So now, and by the way, this is just in used, uh, in used local constant uh, warning or error in Zig's case, but anyways, so here, uh, oh yeah, we wanted right now to actually create an array list. So how we can do that? Well, so let's go ahead and do that. So const array list, and I'm going to call it textures. So a CD dot array list. And here I have to give it the type. In my case, it's going to be C dot texture c.texture2d okay because that's what it's called actually in the Raylib library let me show you there you go it's an alias to texture and texture just contains the id the opengl texture id the width the height map maps and format and by the way texture text data stored in gpu memory vram basically okay Amazing. So, Rayless C dot texture two D. Nice, nice, nice. Now defer. Actually, do we need? Yeah, yeah, we do need defer. So, what we should do when the application, like when the array list, should go out of scope. So defer. Let's see what we're gonna do. So I think I'm going to go through all the textures. So for textures, texture, this is called the capture, by the way. And basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to say C dot in Lloyd texture, texture. Let me make sure I'm spelling that right once again, because we don't have an autocomplete. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. There you go. Lloyd and Lloyd texture. Nice. Amazing. And of course, at the end of it, after we unloaded all the textures in the array list, we're just basically going to free the, the array. So how we can do that? Well, oh, by the way, I didn't init the array here, I think. Yeah. So by the way, basically, uh, Zig have generics. Okay. Now in this case, array list takes a type and that's why I gave it a type, right? And it basically creates a type of array list, so texture 2D array list, right? So, and then I can use that type to initialize allocator. Now, I'd rather actually maybe do something like this texture 2D uh, array list, like that. And there you go, this is our type here const texture 2D array list is equal to that there you go const all right so we have created a type uh, array list of texture 2ds and here we're using that type to initialize and we're passing in the allocator that we want to use and here we should say textures dot d init there you go after of course in loading all the textures that are inside of there all right amazing so now what to do okay so in the dropped files, instead of doing this junk, what we're going to do, we're going to say cost texture is equal to, by the way, we don't need to, to put this into a, uh, an actual uh, variable. There is no need. Just do it directly. Okay. So cost texture is equal to what? To C dot Lloyd texture. And here you give it the file path. In our case, we already have the dropped file path. All right, amazing. Now we have the texture. Now we should make sure that the texture have loaded successfully. And how we're going to do that, basically we're going to check for the ID. Okay, so if you go back to texture 2D. Okay, 
there you go. So there is an OpenGL texture ID. Now, if the texture have failed to load, it's gonna return uh, it's gonna return a texture struct which have the ID equal to zero. So I'm gonna make sure that it's not the case. So if texture ID is equal to zero, then basically continue. There you go. So we're continue gonna continue to the next dropped file path to the next iteration of the for loop. Otherwise, yeah, that's if that's valid. Then what we're gonna say, well, let's see. Uh, we're gonna add that texture into our array of textures. So textures.append, there you go, and add the texture. Amazing, lovely. And that's pretty much it. It should be able to load the textures, etc. So yeah. Now let's make sure this is at least compiles and stuff. So we have some problems. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, uh, the allocator should not be constant. It should be a variable. There you go. What about what's next? Error. Mm -hmm. Const discards. Const qualifier, let's see. What is it talking about? Hold on a second. Well, I am seeing var, what, uh, what is it talking about? Let me make sure to save. Hmm. Bob FN, er, hold on, what? All right, back. Now I think maybe I know what's the problem. The arena allocator maybe should be variable, not constant. Let's try to build now. And, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the array should be the same too. Zig build run. Textures the append can actually err. That's also nice about the Zig is that the standard library always gives you an error when there is a possibility of error. For example, out of memory. But yeah, zigbuild run. Now, for loop operand must be an array, slice. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, textures.items. We don't want to loop through the array itself. We want to loop through the items of that array list. And what's going on here? Uh, oh yeah, uh, the main can actually throw, like not throw, but uh, return an error because we have a try thing here, try. So we should add this guy right here to signify that we could actually go ahead and throw an error basically. And in fact, you're gonna notice that it's gonna give me the error that is possible. In this case, the error that is possible is out of memory. Let's try that out, I guess. Zig build run. And there you go. That works. Amazing. Well, at least it compiles, right? And by the way, you don't need to really be explicit about which errors are possible. If you don't want to do that explicitly, you can just remove that and it will implicitly do that for you. It will infer it, basically. Uh, but if it's possible, then try as much as possible to be explicit, you know? So anyways, so that's pretty much it. Now let's try to draw those textures. So we're gonna go through all the textures in, in drawing, okay? So after that, we're gonna say for loop for every, so for textures.items. Let's go. And the value is texture, right? Now we're gonna say, say C dot uh, draw texture, uh, if I remember well. And let's see the signature of this draw texture. There you go. It takes in the texture, a position X, Y, and the tint. Okay, let's see what we, ha we have. So the texture is texture. And the X is zero for now, zero for Y, and the tint, let's go with C.white. Basically, Raylib actually declares 
or basically have some macros for some colors. And let's go ahead and see what's going to happen here. Now let's try hopefully to And let's try some other image, maybe. Hmm, what's happening? Yeah, file loaded successfully, but... Um, oh yeah, there you go, it's actually getting loaded. As you can see right now, it's actually successful. Doing what, Oh, by the way, I, I think maybe I forgot one little thing here. Actually, not a little, but it's actually a memory leak, I guess. Hold on a second. What? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a memory leak currently, but... But basically... Now, the thing is, in my design, or my decision, I want to actually go ahead and clear whenever we load some new files, we want to clear the 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 files that we already loaded and load them and clear them out then load the new files okay so how are we gonna do that now if you want to do that if you don't want to do that then you can still just go ahead with this guy without any problem okay or in fact you know what i mean i think it's fine maybe we could add some key that clears all the textures explicitly uh yes i guess yeah fine fine all right let's just leave it like that okay fine uh and now let's actually have a now the thing is we're actually able to load multiple images okay if i select all these images and put them in load them now we are able to load multiple images but they're just being drawn af one after the other in the same location and also the problem with this kind of function is that it doesn't give us the ability to rotate and scale our textures okay now if i use for example draw textures uh, ex i have to give a vector to position a rotation a scale and a tint so let's actually try that so draw texture x uh, there you go now the position is c dot vector 2 okay dot x is equal to 0 dot y is equal to 0 and now we're able to, I believe, give it the rotation and the scale. Yep. So rotation, let's say, for example, 0 for rotation. And the scale, let's say, let's make it smaller, 0 0.1, for example. Let's zig build run, uh, zig build run, right? There you go. Let's try to load in files. And look at that. Nice. There you go. Amazing. Pretty nice. Uh, now, also the problem with this is that if you look that into it, actually, hold on a second. Let me let me show you one thing. Here, I don't know why that's. Oh yeah, that doesn't work because it's a JPEG. Uh, and if you go back into actually into here, fail to load image data as you can see. Now, how we can fix this? Well, the thing is, JPEG is not supported by default, but it is actually behind a. Uh, a macro okay so if you go to config.h inside of your raylib and there is a lot of stuff a lot of options that you can enable and disable but in my case since we're making an image viewer i want to to select like to support all the formats that is possible by raylib and by the way raylib is using stb image uh, and there you go in fact we can actually also like now we can actually support all of these images, even PSD, man, even PSD, I think. So, yeah, at least loading. Not sure about actually the loading the ad for a texture, but yeah, anyways. So, now let's actually try again. Oops, what I've done there. Zig build run. Now it's building because, well... All right, now let's try this up, this JPEG, and there you go, we got it. But look at that. It's super, super not pretty cool looking uh, since it's it's not in its uh, original resolution. So, but in fact, if I keep it into its original resolution, let me see, and I give it that, 
Now, as you can see, in its own original resolution, it's pretty nice. Uh, so why that's the case? Because there is something called texture filter, okay? So as you can see, there is some texture configuration functions. There is gen texture map maps. Now this will help you uh, when the image is pretty small, it needs the map maps. And also it, it will help with the uh, actually optimizing the image because when it's smaller, it's going to use a smaller uh, texture basically. All right, so you're getting better image quality into the screen, first of all, and second of all, you're actually optimizing in some sense uh, for image memory, uh, for GPU memory, I think. Not sure exactly, but anyways. So set texture filter. Let's start, actually let's do both. So let's first of all gen texture stuff, map maps. So let's go ahead and do that inside of when we actually, where are we loading? There we go, we're loading it here. So gen texture maps and give it the I believe a pointer to the texture, right? Yes, a pointer. So pointer to texture, there you go. Since it needs to be able to actually edit that, that struct. And uh, why? So we can change the map maps field into whatever, how much map maps it got. So you could actually check if map maps were generated successfully or not. So by just checking if texture dot map maps, you know, I think if it's equal to zero, then that means the mitmaps have failed to generate. But I don't care really about that fact. Or honestly, let's just do it anyways, I think. Hold on a second, texture 2D. Just so if someone needs it, they can find the code for it. Uh, now I hate, I, I kind of hate the Raylib uh, model for error handling. It's not, the best in the world, but I guess at least it, it does give us at least, at least a bit of uh, stuff. But anyways, so map, map levels, it's one by default. So we should check if it's one. If it's one, uh, then that means the texture didn't load. Uh, I mean, the map maps didn't generate successfully. So if, if texture dot map maps is equal to one, that means cd.debug. Not worn. Let's just go with print. All right. In fact, we don't need to print, but anyways, um, maps failed to generate. And let's make sure to add a new line there. And honestly, I don't like to put uh, anything on the format. I just like in the format to put a format basically. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, I'm basically telling it that I'm gonna give you a string and there you go. And by the way, print, the print function in Zig is actually uh, made or implemented in user space. So you can actually see how it's made, you know? So if we have a look into here, there you go. There is no macro, nothing crazy. It's actual Zig that is made with it. And this is actually happens in compile time, which is just amazing. There's the concept of comp time in Zig basically. Um, that's why, but I think it <laughs> looks like I, it just crashed or something. No, no, it didn't crash. Okay, but it just lagged out a bit there. But anyways, so c.gen texture map, make sure you do that. And by the way, does it actually return anything though? I mean, if that's the case, that would be nice, but uh, no, it's void, okay. In fact, even if it generates something, well, Zig will tell us, well, error basically, because we didn't handle the the result. But anyways, so map maps failed to generate, amazing. So we're just printing a debug message right there. Nice, nice, nice. But of course, let's make sure to do that after we check that the texture have loaded uh, successfully. And after that, we're gonna try to set the texture filter too. So set text texture filter. Now I don't think we can actually like check if that was successful or not, honestly. Uh, but anyways, C dot set texture filter. You give it the texture then you should give it the filter here. Now let's look for the in up for that. So C dot 
texture filter. Oh, oops, texture filter, okay. Uh, filter. And there you go. You can actually use all of this stuff. Now, if you say point, it's just going to show you the pixel, okay? Pixel approximation. If you say by linear, there's going to be linear filtering. And try linear, it's better than by linear. It's going to filter it even more, so it looks much smoother. But, uh, of course, you need more uh, performance. Like, so, yeah. Try linear. So I'm going to go with the try linear for best visual results. But if you want, for example, let's say to show every single pixel, then you should go with texture filter point. But anyways, texture filter try linear in my case. C dot texture tr filter try linear. Let's go. And let's actually build, I believe. Hold on, what's going on here? So we have texture. We're giving a pointer. Oh, I think it shouldn't be a const because, well, gen texture maps will actually go ahead and change it. Basically, that's why it's so it should be a variable in this case. Zig build run. Now expected tuple. Oh yeah, I forgot again. Rust symptoms. Okay, Zig build run. There you go. Now, if we, let's say, take this in and load it. Now we get this, but let me actually go ahead and make it smaller now. So instead of one, I'm going to go with 0 0.1. Let's run again and let's see. And there you go. We got it. And look at that. It's pretty smooth <laughs> with the tri linear filtering and the mid maps. So yeah, pretty cool. Actually, let me make it 0 0.5 maybe. Actually, maybe. Yeah, look at that beauty. Oh my god, amazing. Actually, it should be smaller though. Maybe 25. Sick build run. Let's see. And there you go, amazing. Now, actually, if we can actually load multiple textures. And there you go, as you can see, but they're actually being put one after the other, as you can see here. Now, how we can change that? Well, we could uh, basically have a variable on each drawing. Uh, okay, so var, e var x is equal to zero. Let's say, and then basically, uh, we're gonna make this instead of zero, we're gonna make it X. And after drawing, I'm gonna add to the X, I'm gonna add texture.width. And let's see how is that gonna go. Oh yeah, uh, I should give this a type because it's thinking it's comp time int. So let's make it, uh, I guess an I32, or actually let's go with C integer because we're I think with is integer, or in fact, we could just go with i32, why not? Okay, let's build run, and let's see what's gonna happen here. Yo, what's going on? <laughs> An error, okay. Five, uh, expected type f32, oh yeah, it's expecting f32 actually. So let's try that. No, 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 it's not possible, so uh, i32. Now what we could do, we could basically cast uh, cast it here. And by the way, it didn't work with F32 because width is I32, right? So we can cast it here, for example. So how we can cast it? Well, cast int, sorry, uh, int to float. Now it starts with this kind of symbol right here because this is built in into the compiler, basically. Uh, this is given to you by the compiler by the compiler basically. So the destination type is, well, I'm going to go with F32. Okay. And there you go. Now, as you can notice here and from all of this, that in Zig types are actually first class citizen. So you can actually pass them to functions as parameters. You can store them in variables 
etc., etc., etc. And they're actually evaluated in compile time, which is just amazing. <laughs> uh, so Zig Build Run, it's absolutely blown my mind when I just started learning Zig. So hopefully it does with you too. So but anyways, let's actually load all of these files and we got nothing. Why that's the case. Let's see. Uh, so. All right, back. Okay, so why that's not happening? Something is wrong, I think. Hold on. What if we do this? Huh. What? What, what, what? Let's see. So x is equal to zero. Then we're trying to add the width right there. So if we go to back to texture 2D though. There you go, width is integer, int. So what's happening wrong here? So int to float, if 32, x, i32, plus equal texture dot width. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Weird. Um, Zig build run. Let me try, for example, this small image. Hold on a second. Uh -huh. Let's add another one. Still doesn't work for some reason. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Um. Draw texture EX int to float. Now what if we make it maybe what if we make it float? Put the X there. And basically Oh, I think I know uh, yeah, I know what's going on here. Alright. Go back, go back. Yeah, I think I know what's going on here. Now the thing is, the size of these images are 0 0.25, so the width times 0 0.25. <laughs> so, yeah. Zig build run. And type comp, comp time float, okay. Now actually let's work with float, you know, because it's just so annoying. And here we don't need the this cast here anymore. Now Zig actually makes you think twice about your type cast. That's why uh, we're having this problem. So here I'm going to make sure to cast this into float. So int to float. So texture dot width. Add it into the integer here. And here we're trying to go with F32. Let's try this up fully. All right, now this should work out. Okay. Load another. And there you go. As you can see, it added it right there. Amazing. As you can see, it basically adds the width times the scale, width times scale, etc. So if I add this, for example, to, and there you go. We have that, amazing. Now we could also add uh, like the be the functionality to actually, let's say, mm, to clear the textures, right? So let's see how we can do that. Well, hmm. Okay. So you can say if. If, 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 if C though is key down, I believe, or is key pressed? I think, yeah, I think it's key pressed. Let me make sure that's the case. There you go. You give it some key. And where are the keys? There you go. So you key and you give it whichever key you want. Now, I'm not sure which key I want to deal with, but maybe backspace? 
or Dell delete key. There you go. There is a delete key. What about backspace? Yeah, there is also backspace. So maybe let's go with key backspace. So if it's key pressed, key backspace. So C dot key backspace. Now, if that's the case, uh, we're going to go ahead and say textures dot clear. Now clear, there's clear and free, and there's also clear retaining capacity. Now, depending on what you know, want to do here. Now, do you want to also deallocate the array entries, or do you want to clear, but still not deallocate, keep the capacity. So whenever you want to add elements again, uh, we don't have to allocate uh, those entries again. Now, in my case, I'm going to say clear retaining capacity because I know that at some point uh, um, he's gonna he's going to basically. Now it depends on what's your what you want to prioritize. Do you want to prioritize memory, or do you want to prioritize uh, speed? Now, in my case, I'm going to go with speed. I guess so. Let's just clear retaining capacity. So let's say, for example, you added three images. Now at first you have to allocate, so it's going to be a little bit slower. And then in the second time when you're going to clear and try to add the three images again, it's not going to allocate. It's going to be pretty fast. You're just going to add the elements directly, just like that. Uh, so yeah, but if you add an extra element, then the last time, well, it's going to have to allocate memory for that last element. But anyways, clear retaining capacity, you can choose whatever version or function you want, depending on your needs. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. If C dot is keep rest key backspace. Now let's try this up. Zig build run. And let's grab this image, let's say. Let's grab a second image, third image, etc. And there you go, we have this. So now if I click backspace or press backspace. Huh? I'm getting nothing. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I know why, maybe, 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 hold on a second, what? In Lloyd, well, are we in, am I in Lloyd in the textures first? Well, I think I'm not. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing that <laughs> crazy stuff. I was going to have a memory leak right there, but anyways, zig build run. <laughs> Okay, and let's try it out. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Now I have these four images. Now backspace. What? All right, let's try to maybe some other key. Let's say, for example, key delete maybe. Is it called delete? Yeah, it is called delete. So, hmm. Let's try. Backspace. It's still not doing that. Oh my God, what's going on here? Or maybe it's actually doing it, but maybe we're not clearing the screen. Maybe, possibly, who knows? Clear. Oh, I'm not clearing the background, I think. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> forgot about that. Oh my God. That's why I think so, yeah, but at least there is a good, I, I have some good luck in this, right? There's some good in this is that I actually detected the memory leak at least in here. <laughs> Otherwise it would have been just right there floating. So anyways, so how are we going to do this? Well, C dot begin drawing, defer in drawing. Okay. Now here's C dot clear background. And here you can give it some color. In my case, let's go with ray white or white, C dot white. Let's try again. And this time it should work out just fine because we were actually, I think, removing the, the textures, but we weren't clearing the background. So you're just persisting into the screen. And there you go. Now when I click on the delete key, it's gone. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. 
All right, so that's pretty much it. Mm, now I could also add another key that maybe switches the texture filtering. So for example, if the user have like a pixel art of some sort, then he doesn't want that thing, then he can basically switch it, uh, right? So what we could do, what we could do, well, we could have a var texture filter and then we could set it by default to c.texture try line here okay so equal to texture filter amazing now after that we're gonna see here if is now can you actually press two keys at the same time yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's just see if C dot is key pressed. C dot, let's see. <laughs> C, let's see. All right. The C dot hmm. key. Let's go with some key. Let's say, for example, F basically standing for filter, right? Um, so key F. Or actually, let's go with P for pixel art. Let's stand in for pixel art, okay? Now, um, now if if texture filter is equal to C dot texture filter try line here, uh, then basically go ahead and say texture filter. We're basically gonna toggle it. We're gonna say texture filter point else we're gonna say um, texture filter is equal to well honestly we can actually go ahead and basically kind of index through it um, hmm uh, interesting actually hold on a second filter texture filter or what is, what's it called so we can actually go ahead and go through all of these three, maybe. So from point, go to byline here, and from byline here, go to try line here. Does that make sense? I think I have an idea here, actually. So maybe texture filter is equal to texture filter plus one and modulo modulo i think three in this case since we have three elements and it's gonna cycle through it hopefully at least that's what i'm envisioning about so sig build run and let's see if this works all right so uh remainder division with c int and comp time int oh yeah so must use rem or mod Okay, it says that there is another kind of stuff. There is rem, reminder, remainder, uh, division for inside integers. Same as numerator. The caller guarantees that denominator is greater than zero. I think I can guarantee that. I'm not sure though, but what about the other one? There is mod. So what mod is about? Modulus division for inside integer. This is the same as numerator denominator. Call guarantees denominator. Okay. But what's the difference between rem and mod? Remainder divi division. Modulus division. Modulus. Uh... Hold on, I'm just gonna go through this a bit because this is new about for me. I'm just gonna go about for a bit. I'm just gonna read through it and we're gonna go back. All right, back. Now I noticed that there is a subtle difference between them that this guy mod uses the floor and look at that, minus five mod three, it gives us a one. And here in rem or remind a remainder, it actually can give uh, negative values and here it's using div trunk. Uh, to actually complete it into A. So, 
Interesting. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with mod. Mm, not really sure. I think I'm gonna just go with mod. Because that's the modulo operator, basically. I think. So let's try that out, I think. So, yeah, mod. Right, that's the numerator. And the denominator is 3. Let's see if that would work out by any chance. Oh, yeah. Now let's try to get some image. And let's say P, P, P. Well, I'm not sure if this works. Honestly. Um, hmm. All right. All right, all right, all right. Texture filter is equal to mod delo texture filter plus one denominator three okay back all right now i'm not sure we can actually debug this uh let's see cd.debug oh, print uh, format and then i can give it the texture filter and let's see what's going to happen here Sig build run. Let's go. P, 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 P. Let's see if it's actually doing it. It does seem like it's doing it. Oh, oh yeah, I see. So it, it is actually working out, I think, but we're not actually uh, updating the texture filter itself. Okay, so let's actually make sure to do that. So texture filter, texture. Now, of course, we need to look through all the textures again. So um, how to do that, how to do that, how to do that. Well, uh, there you go. So after this guy, we don't need this print anymore, by the way. Now we can basically do this. C dot texture texture filter. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. Now let's try it out, and it should work out hopefully. Uh huh. Let's try this up. P P P. Now honestly, I don't see a difference. Oh yeah, I I can notice the difference. I'm not sure if you in YouTube you can, but I can surely notice. Now this is point. This is bilinear and this is trilinear. Now it's back to point. There you go. Amazing. <laughs> All right, it's working. So it's the key P, but in not sure if I want to make it P. I guess let's go with F for filter. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Although actually, let's make it a constant though. So <laughs> where is the constant? Let's go. So constant. Uh, filter key is equal to or toggle or change filter let's call it cycle filter key <laughs> cycle filter key key delete is equal to that <laughs> now we're gonna use cycle filter key and um, key F so const where is F for by the way oh it's not here it should be here and this is actually the clear textures key or in Lloyd and Lloyd clear let's go to clear clear textures key const clear textures key C dot key. Uh, what we have used? Oh yeah, the backspace or the delete key. But anyway, let's go with backspace. So yeah. Or in fact, honestly, we can even go ahead instead of uh, enlarging all of them at once. We can basically go one by one. You know, but there's no need. Uh, let's not overcomplicate it. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think. Hopefully. 
Now we need to create a camera because right now, as you can notice here, we're, we cannot move stuff up, etc., etc. Uh, but there is a pretty easy way to create a camera. Uh, although I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna change this to a more advanced system in a in a second. But right now, let's start with the crude, the naive way of doing this. Okay, so let's see. Um, <laughs> Let's say we have a variable called maybe translation or something like that, okay? Uh, which is going to be c dot vector two, where x is equal to zero, dot y is equal to zero at the start. So that's your translation right there. By the way, I have I have save. Uh, Format on save on. If you go to file, uh, pre refer, pre -re <laughs> preferences, preferences, preferences. Okay, settings. And if you look into save or format on save, there you go. As you can see, format on save. Oh yeah, it's modified elsewhere. Okay, so I modified it in Zig, right, in the extension. There you go. I modified it here. So yeah, that makes sense. So translation, and by the way, I'm using this extension. Let me show you in a second. Z language, there you go. This is, I think, the official uh, extension, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, so lovely, 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 lovely. So we have translation. Mm -hmm. Now here's X plus translation dot x and here we're gonna have translation dot y now this should work hopefully let me see but we need somehow to actually move the elements right now so yeah it works but we need somehow to change that translation and we're gonna use the mouse for that now let's look for the mouse functions um get mouse ray not this one there you go so this is the mouse functions right here. So we have a git mouse delta, as you can notice here, which is amazing. So let's actually try this out. So, and first of all, we actually, let's check is mouse button is down or not. So there's a difference between pressed and down. Pressed will basically only be fired once, uh, one frame basically when that happens, okay? Uh, but the down, for example, will be actually on on all frames that the button is down, basically. So yeah, pretty much the same thing with up. All right, yeah, and the same uh, and also mouse button released is, I think, the opposite of pressed. But anyways, so I'm gonna say is mouse button down. So if it's mouse button down, if C dot is mouse button down, which mouse button? Well, I guess I'm gonna go with mouse left. Uh, let me show you, mouse, there you go. So there's three buttons right there. Mouse left button and mouse right button and mouse middle button. So yeah, pretty much mouse left button. And of course C. Let's actually go with, yeah, fine. Mouse left button. Okay. And then we're going to say translation plus equal. Now, of course, to be able to do that, let's make sure. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. So translation plus equal to C dot get mouse delta. And let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Is equal to C dot. Well, vector to add. Uh, you can find that function. I don't think you can find it here, though. Yeah, uh, you can find it in Raymath. Hold on a second. Raymath.h. There you go. So there's a lot of functions about mathematics here. Uh, you know, quaternions, lerp, normalize, uh, vectors, etc. Which is amazing. Now we need to actually include this Raymath two to be able to use it. So C include. 
Now, of course, in the land of C, uh, order matters in terms of C in includes and defines and, and defines, etc. So just be wary about that. I'm not sure if Raylib and like if it doesn't matter the order, but I'd rather go with Raylib first than go with Raymath. I guess so. Yeah. Anyways, so Raymath. Now, since I have that header uh, imported or included, now I can use that vector to add right there. Now this, you give it two vectors and it adds them, adds them together. Now I'm going to add translation, which is a vector two, to the mouse delta. Sig build run. And now let's actually load some image. And there you go. Now I can move the image around. Amazing. Perfect. Lovely. Amazing. Now, we can also add even zoom. So, how we can do that? Well, we can add another variable called zoom. And by default, it's going to be, let's say, one. Okay, and of course, I need it as a float. So, yeah. Now, we're going to check if c dot raylip let's see um mouse wheel there you go so there's two functions for mouse wheel there is get mouse wheel movement for x or y whichever is larger and get mouse wheel movement for bo both x and y all right interesting so some people could have like some mouse wheel that is multi-dimensional like one that goes here and vertical and horizontal i guess <laughs> but in my case i'm just going to go with this one which basically takes the larger the largest one so yeah let's just go with this guy if c get mouse wheel and void is basically nothing so c dot get mouse wheel uh well, actually, that's. Oh, yeah, mouse wheel move. Okay. So let's say this is const mouse wheel move is equal to that. Now, if mouse wheel move is equal, not equal to zero, then we can go ahead and say zoom maybe plus equal. Let's see. Uh, Sig build run. And let's see what's going to happen. It looks like it's building. Let's see if this. Well, actually, the zoom won't work right now because, yes, we have actually managed to set up the zoom variable, but we're not using the zoom variable yet um, in actual rendering. So, here. If you remember, we have a scale here, okay? In this case, it's 0 0.25, but we can actually make it into zoom, maybe. <laughs> zoom. Okay. Let's see. Oopsies. Yeah, so the mouse wheel move is super large. We have to change that. So I'm going to have a... Let's see, uh, const, I'm going to create another constant here, const mouse wheel move sensitivity, hopefully I spelled that right, sensitivity, I'm not sure sense or sen, what, what, maybe this or this, not exactly sure honestly. Uh, let's see, sensitivity, yuppie, SI, let's go, I always take that wrong, <laughs> I always get that wrong, so mouse wheel move sensitivity, let's say 0 0.001 or something like that, I don't know, now let's do times mouse wheel move, here, uh, times, let's see, times that, 
I don't think that will run. Maybe I have to use move, uh, like multiply. No, no, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. All right, so let's see. Let's say this, for example. As you can see, when I zoom off and I'm zooming right now, uh, but the sensitivity sensitivity is pretty low. Let's make that 0 0.01. Okay, look at that. Amazing. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Now let's add another image. Another image. And there you go. Amazing. But notice one thing is that it's not zooming towards the mouse, you know. It's actually zooming towards the center. Look at that. So, as you can see, this works out, but it's pretty limited. It's pretty naive implementation. <laughs> so, and there's also rotation, by the way, uh, which you can use. So we could maybe say, uh, I guess, rotation. All right, and then make that variable two. Let's see. Uh, let's make it here. So var rotation is equal to what? Well, F32, I think. Yeah, is equal to zero at first. And what we could basically do. Now, if there is some mouse wheel move. Now we could, what we could do here, basically, we could check if is some key is down. Okay, so it's key down and let's say the shift key so c dot shift left shift key now you could say left or right shift key basically let's go for example left shift key for now shirt key right shirt shift key so yeah now if the left shift key is on I actually want to rotate to make it into a rotation. Otherwise, zoom, okay? So, yeah, rotation plus equal to mouse wheel move times. Well, honestly, instead of mouse wheel move sensitivity, let's go with maybe zoom sensitivity here. <laughs> uh, so, or, you know what? Hmm. Let's just keep it as it is, actually. Let's just keep it as it is for now. So we see what's gonna happen here. Seek build run. All right, so if C though is key left. Uh, all right, you couldn't find the left shift key. I think it's probably shift left key, maybe. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Uh, key left shift. Oh man, crazy stuff, okay. Key left shift. Let's see what's gonna happen. I mean, I know what's gonna happen. I can already see what's gonna happen, but. There you go, I'm zooming right now. But right now I'm gonna hold shift and Look what's happening, but it's super slow, super, super slow since that's in degrees, I think maybe. So let me actually scale it a bit. So where is it? 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 Instead of time mouse wheel, let's just remove this because I don't think we need it uh, in this case. Zig build run. All right. Let's do this. Uh-huh, load it. And there you go. I'm shifting right now and rotating. And look at that. It's <laughs> every one of them is rotating around their own top corner, basically. <laughs> you see what's happening here? So as you can see, it's pretty not maintainable solution. So the right solution though, 
The right solution to this problem is to actually create a camera, to use a camera. Now this will allow us to do a lot of amazing stuff that you're gonna be able to see right now. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, let's start by uh, creating a camera. So c.camera 2D. So var camera is equal to c.camera 2D. I didn't use a language that actually uses var as its keyword for a long time, from JavaScript's time, I think. <laughs> Anyways, c.camera 2D. There you go. And let's see what kind of uh, stuff there is. Okay, control. Why oh, it's taking too long? Let's go, okay. All right, so we have offset, target, rotation, and zoom. So this is displacement from target, and the target is rotation and zoom origin. There you go. And the rotation, camera rotation degrees, and there's the camera zoom scaling, should be 1.0f by default. Interesting. And these two are, are vectors, okay. So, Let's start by offset. So dot offset is equal to C dot vector two. Okay, dot, actually I can use the vector two zero thing. I believe, I mean, if I go here, vector two, there you go, vector two zero. So there you go, the offset, and then there you go, target two. Now this is basically uh, vector two zero, so. Okay, amazing. Now we also have a rotation. It's going to be equal to zero. And there is the uh, zoom, which should be one by default, basically. And then what we should do basically is, all right, let's see. <laughs> Uh, let's, I guess, do it here. So C dot begin mode 2D, I think, right? There you go, begin mode 2D. So you say C dot begin mode 2D, you give it the camera that you want to use, and then of course you end, end it. So end mode 2D, right or no? Yep, in mode 2D. Of course, you give it nothing after that. So and here we can basically just to emphasize the fact that there is this guy, we can do this, right? Amazing. So C dot begin mode 2D, defer in mode 2D, and there you go. Camera 2D, okay. Amazing. All right. Uh, now, the thing is, I don't want to use this kind of stupid way of doing th things, right? I'm going to go with draw texture. And we're basically going to be using the other function that we used before. So there's no need for any of this. Basically, you're just going to have texture and you're going to have zero. Uh, you're not gonna have any rotation. I believe also not any zoom. Basically just give it the X and the Y. In our case the X should be this X that we calculated from the texture. And in fact there is no need to do all this crazy stuff anymore. You just say as uh, uh, Yeah, you just say plus texture dot width and And this becomes I32 so pretty much, I think. All right, amazing.
I think that's how you use a camera to do. Let's see. And there you go, it got loaded. Amazing. But thing is, of course, right now there's no move, no zoom, nothing like that. Interesting. Because we're gonna do that with the camera itself. So, how to do that? Well, let's see. Zoom vector to zero. By the way, I'm not sure if I can put this guy inside of there. Because it's not really a true constant because it's coming from the C API. I'm not sure if you can do that. It does seem it can, so okay, fine, nice. Uh, all right, lovely. Now, we don't need translation anymore, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, we don't need that, I think. Okay, because we already have the camera's offset and target. And then we have the zoom. Now, instead of zoom, I'm going to make this a target zoom. Target rotation. This is our target rotation zoom. And our actual zoom and rotation will be here. Okay. So, yeah, just to make sure we're having the same in the same page right here. So, let's make sure uh, we fix those stuff that uses them. So, this will become target zoom. All right. Amazing. And where is the target rotation? Let's see here, this will become target rotation. All right, amazing. So now let's figure out how we can make this work. First of all, let's try to figure out how we can actually do this, uh, their translation. So instead of translation, we're gonna say camera dot target. Now you can think about target is basically kind of like, it basically, is uh, defines, of course, the the origin of your zoom and rotation, and also defines maybe the position in the mm, in the world. So one of these guys, I'm not exactly sure. So this target and offset both are, you know, contributing into the mix. But anyways, uh, so camera dot target here, I believe. So, of course, we're using Vector to add right there. And let's see if this would work by any chance. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, we just have to negate it. So how we can do that? Well, uh, I think there's a Vector to neg or negate or Vector to negate. There you go, it's your tuning gate. Uh, so C dot Victor two negate. Let's go. And yeah. Let's take build run. And I guess right now it should be fine. What is going on in here? <laughs> what? Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, I, I didn't meant to do it here. I meant to do it in the mouse delta. All right. Uh, hopefully right now that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And there you go. Now it works out. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Lovely, lovely. Okay. So. Vector to negate, get mouse delta, Vector to add. Now let's try to actually set up uh, the zoom and stuff. So where is the zoom? It's right around here. So we are basically going to say camera.zoom for now at least. For now we're just going to say camera.zoom is equal to target zoom. Let's see what's going to happen here. Okay. 
Let's load an image. And as you can see, it works. But again, the problem we have here is that uh, it's not respecting my mouse location. It's not zooming towards my mouse location. It's it's zooming towards the you know the top left part of the of the screen. So how we can fix that? Well, we can use a combination of offset and target to do that, which is pretty cool. So let's see. Now before we set the camera to zoom, let's make sure to. Uh, actually, it, I maybe it doesn't really matter the order. It just maybe make sure that before you start drawing using that camera, make sure that the zoom is set up with the offset and target. But anyways, so camera dot target. The target will be equal to. Well, I need the actual. Yeah, I need the mouse location in the screen. So how to do that? I think get mouse position, right? If I remember. Moses, okay. <laughs> get mouse position. All right. Get mouse position. C, that'll get mouse position. Of course, this will give us a vector too. Nice. Now, of course, we don't want to do that in the target. We want to do that in the offset. Okay, so, and I'm gonna do a bug here intentionally, just so I I can make sure that you are paying attention. So, because I actually have done it myself. But anyways, uh, const. Let's say the mouse position. Okay, is equal to get mouse position. Now, not the target, but the offset that should be uh, set to the mouse position because the offset is the one that is responsible for the camera uh, in the screen coordinates kind of thing, right? Uh, and then camera the target is equal to what? Not to mouse position, but uh, the world position of the mouse. There you go. So, get world. actually get screen to world 2d so we have the screen coordinates which are the mouse position and we're going to make it into the world coordinates world 2d and you give it to camera all right okay so let's get screen to world 2d and it gives you a vector 2 right which we need and then we're basically going to give it the mouse position and of course the camera All right, back. So OBS have crashed on me. In fact, <laughs> man, I almost finished with the application and it crashed on me. Now I gotta come back and redo it from this part where it crashed. But anyways, let's get going. Let's continue. So C dot get screen to our two D mouse position camera. Um. <laughs> so yeah, let's go. All right. Now my brain is trying to adapt. <laughs> it's like I've gone back in time, but my memory have not gone back in time. <laughs> Man, anyways. <laughs> All right. Nice. So So I think I think we didn't fix that bug, right? That I've talked about. So camera. Yeah. So the thing is the bug is uh, I think I presented a lot of things much better in the recording that got broken. But anyways, so basically, you should make sure to do it this way. Because in the other way around, the thing is, get screen toward 2D calculates the target dependent on the camera, the current camera values, which includes the offset. So you don't want to use the new offset, the new position, the screen position. No, you want to use the previous position, right? And that's why you have to make sure to set this guy first with the previous camera values, then set the offset, which doesn't really depend on anything. Mouse position, basically. And that should hopefully fix it. Now, camera.zoom equal to target.zoom and stuff. 
But honestly, I wanted to show you, right, I wanted to show how it's going to look when it's like this, right? Uh, I think that's what I wanted to show you. I've shown it in, <laughs> in my previous footage, but, you know, I forgot about all of that stuff now. Oh my god, so sorry. So, anyways, uh, yeah. All right, so there is a, a little problem here. All right, we should make sure to only set the target zoom and stuff when we actually want to zoom, right? So after setting target zoom, we can do that. Let's now zig build run. All right, I get my mosque right here. And notice that we have a little bug here. So I'm trying to zoom right now and notice all that crazy stuff because too simply of the order. <laughs> now this can get you for month with debugging or without a debugger, doesn't matter. <laughs> Zig build run, okay. I actually fallen into this, although it didn't really take me too long to, to, to notice, but yeah. All right, so we have another problem is the fact that notice in, in in normal zoom it's fine movement is perfectly matched it's synchronized okay it's like ik like inverse kinematics but notice right now is that when i'm zoomed out notice that it's kind of like parallax now <laughs> i mean if you're going to that field and yeah you're done but in my case i don't want parallax i want it in Basically, when you click, it's kind of like inverse kinematics. It's kind of like you're actually touch, like getting the image, like just touching it and swapping or something like that. It's kind of like Android. <laughs> so like phone touch input. But anyways, so how we can do that? Well, basically because we're not in our translation right here. So this is the actual translation. Okay. Just to show you, let's make this into an actual variable or actually constant. So the translation is equal to this stuff, right? Now, this is our translation. And now the thing is here, we're not taking into account the zoom. And that's why we're having that problem. Well, not problem, but you know, it's not doing what we want. It's a semantic problem. It's not doing what the, the thing that we want it to do. So, okay, semantic bug, um, but we should take into account, as I said, the zoom. Let's how we can do it. Well, we can say C dot fixer to scale. Now there is a function in math.h in Raymath, um, which is called fixer to scale, which you basically can give it a vector and a scalar value. Now the scalar value is a number basically, and that number will be, uh, will scale the vector. What it means to scale basically will multiply that number with the X and the Y of the vector and return the result vector. Uh, so if you say two, and let's say you have vector two, four, three, it's gonna become eight, six, okay? So, yeah. But in my case, I'm gonna actually, I know that I need some formula that calculates the translation depending on the zoom, so they're synchronized together. So let's start at some pretty obvious way, which is to basically scale by the zoom. See what's gonna happen. Now this won't work, but yeah. Uh, now we have this, all right. Of course, at normal zoom, 1.0, nothing is wrong with it. But when we zoom out or in or whatever, let's see what's gonna happen. Now it doesn't even move. <laughs> so what's happening here? Okay, so notice that when we're far away, it doesn't translate too much. In fact, it does the opposite. It translates a little. But when we're in, when we're in the image, what it does, well, it is actually faster. Look at that. So you can notice that it is actually the inverse. It's uh, the relationship, the inverse relationship, okay? All right. So what we should do, well, one divide by C dot get mouse delta, or actually, actually, no, no, one divide by target zoom. Okay. 
And in fact, even if you look into the calculations of the camera matrices that we're, we're using right here, that really uses, uh, you're gonna find the distance is kind of like reciprocal to some crazy stuff in the projection matrix, etc. But anyways, so zig build run. We have our image now, and let's see what's gonna happen. Now I think it works, right? I'm just making sure. Honestly, I do remember that I maybe I used some. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, where it's coming? It's coming the in the future. <laughs> uh, that crashed in the video, but anyways. That's why. Uh, yeah, so there you go. We fixed actually the target zoom. Now, whatever zoom it is, it is synchronized. Okay. Now, what's next? Now, one thing, the target zoom, we set it here in this frame. So let's make sure we set the zoom first. Then if there's any translation to be done, it's going to be get translated. So we can take into account the new target, target zoom if there's any new value. Uh, okay, pretty cool. Now, what we should do next. Now we could make this into a function. Okay. And why we need to make it into a function? Because I want to use it twice for the rotation and for the movement. And why? Well, because yes, we have fixed the, the zoom, right? So right now, as you can see, it's, it zooms towards the mouse and outwards of the mouse, right? So yeah pretty cool but when I try to, to rotate which is actually not doing because I forgot to set the target rotation I think yeah so how we can do that well where is target rotation where are we setting the rotation though um, here okay so here let's set the camera dot rotation to that Target rotation. Now you might feel that this is redundant, you know. We could have just used the camera dot rotation, but I'm doing it this way because we're we're gonna be something spice. We're gonna be doing something spicy in the future, so uh, it's gonna be looking so nice. Trust me. But anyways, uh, just trust me, bro. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Now shift. And rotate. Notice that it doesn't rotate around the mouse. It doesn't even care about the mouse, but it actually rotates around the camera center. And if you want that, there you go. If you want this behavior, there you go. But it's not the behavior that I want. I want it to rotate around the mouse. So how, what, how can I do that? Well, basically I need to do the same exact thing again. Uh, just like zoom. Okay. Not the zoom platform, the actual zoom, right? So target rotation, mouse wheel zoom, camera dot rotation. Mm -hmm. Now before setting the zoom, I guess we can do that. Uh, basically just copy paste, nothing crazy right there. Uh huh. Let's get a mask, beautiful mask. And let's try to rotate now. And notice that right now it's actually rotating around the mouse. Notice that. Lovely. But there is a problem if you, if you didn't already notice that when it's rotated, the translation is no longer right. And it's going to be more, you're going to notice it more when the image is something like this. <laughs> Look at that, all right? So it doesn't really respect our rotation. So how we can deal with that? But before doing that though, I just, instead of copy paste, I wanna make this into a function actually. Okay, so let's make this into a function. This part right here. Well, I, I don't really need this part, but this guy. Okay. Now I'm gonna make a function called fn. Oopsies, if n, 
I'm gonna make sure my my recording didn't crash again. <laughs> okay, nice. It didn't. So focus. Well, I'm not telling you to focus. The name that I want to call it is focus, right? <laughs> focus camera. Okay. And here, camera is of type. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We can either use the value semantics and basically pass the camera by value and get another camera back. And then we can set that camera value that we got back into the, the camera. So basically replace the camera. Or we could use pointers to basically reference cinema, c cinematics. <laughs> uh, reference semantics, okay? Now just to, I think both works. Maybe value would work better. I don't know exactly, honestly. But for the sake of learning Zig's pointers and how to actually make some functions that actually go ahead and uh changes some value like does some effect instead of returning a value we're going to use that pointers like the reference cinematics cinematics semantics or the pointer semantics whatever you want to call it anyways see dot camera 2d okay so focus camera it's going to return nothing because it's going to actually go ahead and mutate the camera now people from functional languages won't like this term mutate it's kind of like, <laughs> it's so annoying for them. They just want to use. Now, if you want to do that, well, you can just do this and do this, right? And just return the resulted camera. Now, just to show you that you cannot actually, even if you do this, you cannot change the camera directly. Now, let me actually do it in, in both ways. So I can actually show you anyways, fine. Now, if we say camera dot, and of course, we also need another parameter, which is going to be the screen position. So screen position, because there is world and there is screen position. Now, in this case, we're using screen position. So C dot vector two. All right. So camera dot offset is equal to screen position. Now this shouldn't work. I'm not sure why it didn't error. Maybe if I compile now, it will error. It didn't, but generally you shouldn't do it this way. Or maybe it didn't because I'm not using focus camera yet. Maybe. But basically, uh, in Zig, you shouldn't actually go ahead and mutate your parameters. No, just no, because Zig, can actually optimize your parameters, your parameters, the, like basically when you say, when you pass something by value, like for example, C dot camera 2D in this case, or whatever, or C dot vector 2 or any value basically, or Zig won't let you uh, mutate the variable because it could actually automatically pass it as a reference or as, or as a value, although you give it as a value, okay? Uh, so it can optimize, okay? So you basically, when you pass by value to a function, you give the decision to to Zig to either pass the value by reference or by value. But you should always, although it's not always by, by reference, but you should always make sure to not mutate the parameters and always make sure to to assume that it's passed by reference you know although it could be by value but yeah so you don't do something crazy right there but how we can do this well basically you can uh, clone your value or reference or whatever you want to call it okay so how are we going to do that well const cam now of course there is no over like shadowing of variables in zig so as you can see if I do this like this, camera, it's going to say local constant camera shadows function parameter from our scope. So that's illegal. So you should call it something else. For example, cam. Okay. So we can say cam dot offset and cam dot 
uh, target is equal to, you know, that world stuff. <laughs> Where is it? Get screen world 2D. There you go. Okay. Now, of course, let's make sure to set the target first, then the offset. And here we have screen position. I call it screen position so it is general because it's not, it doesn't really have to be the mouse, you know, the mouse uh, location or position. It can be any screen position, whichever you want. Okay. So yeah, screen position, you give it the camera. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter in this case, maybe. No, 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 it's fine. Let's just use, honestly, let's just use cam anyways, just in case, who knows. And let's return cam. Th this is how you use the value semantics. And of course, um, how are you gonna work with this, basically? You're gonna say, instead of this stuff, you're gonna say camera is equal to uh, focus camera. You're gonna give it the camera and you're going to give it your mouse position. And this should hopefully work. Camera, focus camera, camera, mouse position. Camera, okay, let's remove this too. And in fact, since this is uh, both have the same thing, we could just basically take this out, put it somewhere around here and there's no need for this no need for this all right nice amazing okay nice 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 where are we setting the zoom by the way what not exactly sure, honestly. Hold on, what? Something wrong here. Key let shift. Now here it shouldn't be zoomed though, what? Why this guy's here? <laughs> oh yeah, I because of copy paste, but it shouldn't be there, okay. Here target rotation and here target zoom. Okay, interesting. So now let's try this up. Zig build run. Run, run, run. Now cannot assign to constant. Now <laughs> you need to actually make this a uh, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because this should be a variable. Now zig build run. And there you go. And now let's make sure this is working out. Hmm? It's not working. Oh, I think because we didn't commit the target zoom. Yeah, we didn't. So let's make sure to do that. So camera dot zoom is equal to target. So, and here, are we doing the same thing with camera.rotation? By any chance? Nope. So let's make sure to do that there too. There you go. Sig build run. Uh now notice that it is working again the same way it was working so and if i hold shift there you go amazing now no 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 what's the problem with this well there's no problem but i also want to show you how we can actually do it in the other way around for learning's sake, so so we can make this into a pointer. We no longer need to do this, and now instead of this, we don't need this, and we don't need this. 
and we can say camera dot, but we should make sure to dereference. Now this in zig is equivalent to this in, in C. Okay. Yeah, this guy. This is how you do it in C, and this is how you do it in Zig. To dereference a pointer, basically. So, same thing with here. And of course, make sure to set this to camera, but notice one other thing is that get screen to or 2D takes in a camera, not a reference to a camera or a pointer to a camera. So we have to dereference it here too. Now in C, you would do this like this. So yeah, and notice that it's not, in C, it's not kind of, it's not consistent, while in Zig it is, so that's nice. Uh, so yeah, all right, amazing. And this should work out, but before that, before it can work, uh, we have to go where we're using it, here. We no longer need to actually do this. But we should also pass by reference. Sig belt run. And this should be the exact same thing. I'm not sure which one is better. You can you can benchmark. And please, if you benchmark, let me know in the comments <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, you can also join my Discord, by the way. But anyways, so as you can see, it's working the same way as it was before. Amazing. But we have a problem to fix. Notice, is that our translation doesn't care about our rotation. So, how we can also fix that? Well, it's not that hard. Um, basically, in focus, uh, not in focus, um, where we're setting the translation and stuff. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hopefully I don't have any memory leaks. <laughs> Uh, if you, any one of you notice a memory leak that I didn't fix by the end of the video, let me know. But anyways, uh, I'm probably gonna put this in GitHub so you can even like, uh, me, like come like commit uh, an issue into GitHub or maybe even try to fix it yourself using some. And if you want to add something, by the way, just do it. You're welcome. Uh, anytime. And just pull a request pull the request that you want and there you go if it's if it's good with me i'm gonna add it i'm gonna accept it so but yeah anyway let's see so where is the translation there you go now here in our translation we're not taking into account the the rotation right so how we can do that? Well, if you go to Raymath and you go to uh, angle, vector two angle, there you go. So vector two angle, you can give it, oh, what? Actually, no, rotate, rotate, sorry. Vector 2, rotate. There you go. So you can give it a vector and an angle, right? And it goes ahead, uses cosine and sine to rotate the vector around by the angle that you gave it. So let's use that. Uh, all right, let's see how we can do that. Well, translation, we're going to go ahead and say vector 2, uh, sorry, uh, c dot vector 2, rotate. We're going to give it the vector translation and I'm going to give it the rotation. Now, there is a problem here, uh, but before I fix it, I'm going to show you what's the result. If it happens to you, you can, you can notice it. So, translation, comma, target, rotation. Well, in fact, instead of target rotation, you can just use camera.rotation, in fact. So, yeah. And target zoom. Where we're sitting the, the rotation right here. Okay, so that's nice. Let's try that out. And of course this won't work, but I want to show you how it looks. Okay, so if I rotate, 
add, notice what I'm getting. It's still not good. And the problem is that vector 2 rotates, what is it using? It is using cosine and sine. Cosine and sine, it takes its argument, the angle, uh, in radians, okay? And uh, the camera's angle is in degrees. So we have to convert them, okay? So dick to rad and rad to dick. So there is two macros in Graylip called dick to rad and rad to dick. There are values which you can multiply a bit. Um, so in my case, I have degrees and I want to turn it into radians. So I'm going to use dick to rad. So camera.rotation times c.dig to rad. Dig to rad, right? Hold on. Uh, degrees to radius. Right, exactly. So now it should work out hopefully. Let's see. All right. Now if shift and rotate. Now this still doesn't work out. And there is another problem. Now, as you can see, this is fine, but when you do something like this, again, there is this problem, okay. Now, the, the problem there is that camera, this should be negative, okay. Sig build run. So, yeah. Now, shift. And there you go. Now, it is fixed. Amazing. Now, I can basically load images in. Oopsies. I've just teleported into the wild. Like, into the... <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> and you know why? Too simply because I didn't clamp the zoom. So... Where is the zoom? There you go. As you can see, there is no clamping going on. So I'm going to make this into target zoom plus. And then I'm going to use mm, maximum. So scd.math maximum. This guy. By the way, let me check that the stream is... Uh, yeah, it's fine. All right. So instead of the mouse wheel, sensitivity. <laughs> uh, actually, it's called as a zoom increment. Yeah, I think it's much better that way. Honestly, since it's uh, constant for now, let's say zoom increment like that. And uh, all right. Interesting. Where is zoom increment? There you go. Let's set it here. Okay. Now this or zoom increment. Now why I used maximum? So that the minimum will be zoom increment. If it's if this guy is less than zoom increment, then it will be set to zoom increment. So I'm just making sure that zoom increment is the minimum by using the maximum operator, right? Uh, so yeah, pretty much. Now that should fix that problem, hopefully. I always like to, to, to make sure to test because if you made a lot of tests and something is going wrong because you forgot something or something like that, and it's a disaster. <laughs> Get ready for a long session of debugging. So yeah, pretty much that's the iterative approach for debugging and testing. So what's next? What's next? What's next? Now, maybe I actually reached the point where 
the like I I gone back to re to re record the video maybe not sure honestly At this point my brain is going uh, crazy so where is it translation minus camera two alright yeah so that's So gonna be back in a second. Gotta go to pray. Let's go. Alright, she back then like back better than ever. So Okay. So I have a lot of ideas right now. But I'm not sure if we finished what I wanted to do before because I've already done it in that crash thing. But for now, since I don't really see anything to fix <laughs> until we do so um, right now uh, let's add I guess some new features so as you can see and by the way let's me oh yeah oh yeah I know I know what so we wanted to to use target like why I use target zoom target rotation instead of just setting directly the rotation and stuff Interesting, okay. Nice, nice, nice. So, I don't think we need to set the rotation and zoom. Uh, like, we can set it all the time, right? I think. So, let's try it out. Camera.zoom and camera.rotation and zig build run. So, we're basically always updating the target zoom and the target rot rotation with the actual cameras target rotation etc but anyways so as you can see it's still working just as it was pretty amazing all right but now it's absolutely fine for the position i don't want to do anything with that uh but yeah uh, zoom and rotation now it would be cool if zoom and rotation especially rotation is much uh, cleaner I mean in fact also rotation and zoom right now are quite slow honestly so maybe for zoom we could maybe go with 0 0.1 and also for rotation where is the rotation let's go with times I guess 45 degrees maybe what about that? Zig build run. And uh, let's try something, I guess. Shift, rotate. As you can see, it's fast, but it's, uh, it's super, super not smooth, right? So, yeah. So, I can make it smooth. And notice that for the image zoom, it's quite different in the sense that when you're far away, the zoom looks so not smooth, but the more you zoom in, the more it looks smoother and slower. Okay, so how we can fix that? Well, let's start by the rotation because it's pretty simple. In fact, for target zoom and target rotation, I guess we can do something. We could use blurp. Now, trust me, this is not the last result, for rotation at least, but we're getting there, step by step, <laughs> because I have a little surprise for that. Anyways, lerp. It's not too much, you know, it's just not to expect anything crazy, but still, it's quite nice, I, I think. Anyways, so lerp, we'll start to end, end with the amount, okay. So lerp c dot oopsies c dot well in fact yeah yeah it's fine blur mm -hmm. now of course you go start with the start <laughs> camera dot rotation is the start and the destination is target rotation and the amount we're gonna use the frame time so it is frame time independence or frame independence okay so fps are independent basically 
So whether you have 70 FPS or 1000 FPS doesn't matter, the speed will be the same of the animation. You know where I'm going with this right now. So <laughs> let's actually say frame time. So uh, const frame time. Uh, frame time is equal to c dot get frame time. This is a function in Raylib, of course. And by the way, we're not really exploiting a lot of Zig's potential uh, and features because right now, we're, as you can see, we're mostly using the C API, the C library, instead of actual Zig code. Okay, uh, but yeah. Uh, okay, so. Lerp, lerp, lerp. So we got that lerp, and what we need. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you get frame time actually. Uh, the get frame time signature. We live dot h. There you go. It's right around here. Get time in seconds for last frame drawn. Delta time. There you go. It's called delta time. Uh, but I think I agree that frame time. I think maybe is better. Uh, it's more descriptive. So let's just go with that. Okay, so we could get it, give it frame time there, and let's see what's gonna happen. Moment of truth. So, let's have this. So, let's try rotation now. There you go. There you go. Amazing. But, 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 but. Problem is that it's so slow. You know why? Because too simply, it takes one second for it to reach its destination. Now, how we can actually change that? Well, by dividing by duration. So frame time divided by animation duration, right? So rotation, anim animation duration. <laughs> you know what? It's just rotation duration, okay? Animation duration. Yeah, amazing. So actually, this is a constant for now. So let's do it like this. Honestly, I'm not sure if I want to be using. Honestly, there's no need to. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, doing stuff in C right now. So just say rotation, duration, same thing with the other stuff. You know, there's no need, I guess. Fine. I mean, there's a lot of things that are constants in Zig anyway, so uh, there's no need to do this crazy stuff. Clear, textures key, uh, vector two zero. Okay, so cycle, filter key, clear, Textures key and zoom increment vector to zero. Amazing. Here there is the width and the height, but honestly, I don't want to change that because basically that's not going to be constant when you're going to resize the window. It's not going to be true anymore, but later on we may do that. Anyways, for now, uh, I think the title could be a good match for this, maybe. I don't know. Constant const title is equal to that. And there you go. Amazing. Yo, what what? Why cycle filter key is this and why key delete? No, um, key, well, we choose in P because it's for pixel, you know, but anyways, zoom increment, 0 0.1, picture to zero, nice, 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 amazing, and also rotation duration, and also another thing that, yeah, here, rotation increment, there you go, okay, nice. Now var or const rotation increment. Oopsies, uh, 45. But honestly, let's make it maybe at least 15 for now. Const 
uh, rotation duration, right? Oopsies. Rotation duration, let's go with, uh, I guess, 0.2. So it's going to be responsive, but at the same time, not junky, maybe. So I guess it's right. Cycle filter key, yeah, because we didn't change that. There you go. Okay. Zig build run. Okay, nice. Let's go. All right. And there you go. So smooth. And also, since we're using lerp and target ro rotation, etc., it is also gives the effect that when you actually do more than, like when you're faster in terms of your wheel, it's also going to be faster because you're overriding the value, so it's lerping more, and then the duration gets invalidated in some sense, uh, if that's mm, could be said. But anyways, zoom increment is too much, honestly. But still, I'd like to actually show you how linear, wrote, uh, linear animation would also uh, at least make it a little bit better. Although it, do it won't fix everything, but uh, just so we go step by step, I'm going to show you a much nicer way of doing this. But for now, step by step. So camera.zoom. And yeah, all right. Um, target zoom, lerp, and let's go to frame time, divide by zoom duration. Okay, interesting. Now let's have a const zoom duration is equal to this guy. Well, 0.2. Seek build run. Yeah, now let's try this. And there you go. The zoom is much nicer now, at least. As you can notice. Amazing. But I think zoom is doesn't really isn't intuitive to the human eye perception, at least. Um, the linear zoom. So, the surprise is that instead of linear zoom, let's use logarithmic zoom. <laughs> I know, it's a fancy word or fancy term, right? Anyways, so, 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 how are we going to deal with that? Well, <laughs> well, I guess times equal, camera dot is in times equal, and basically we need to use log. So here instead of C, I'm going to use, I guess, zig, uh, std. So std math dot log. Now you could give this log comp type t type and base t x t. I guess let's go with that. F32 for the type because log is generic. Basically, you tell it what type you want it for to be like, right? So if I show you here, as you can see, it's doing, it's looking, it's like Zig have type reflection. Okay, so at at compile time you can actually go ahead and look up the type and what is it etc you know and do something else depending on what it is and of course all, not all of this get comp like is right there no uh, it's like the the stuff that is not needed it's get compiled away which is just amazing when i knew this it just blew my mind right as you can see for example just looking if base equal equal to it's returned math.log2 or math.log10. Now, if, of course, if, uh, if base is comp time, which means that it's known at compile time, it's probably gonna compile away the stuff that you don't need. Um, but yeah. 
math.luzycast. Luzycast. Pretty interesting stuff. Anyways, let's not go into details right now. Um, let's not go into details right now. So the base. Well, honestly, I don't know which base. Maybe 10 base. The base 10. Who knows? Um, comma. Now the exponent. Oh. Honestly, I don't remember how it's done. Oh, oh, I think, I think I know. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I think target zoom divided by camera dot zoom. Maybe, not exactly sure. Uh, and here, I think frame time divided by zoom. This is in the exponents, of course. Zoom duration. Not exactly sure, honestly, but let's see if this works out. Zig Bildren. And what just happened right now? Yeah. So something is going on wrong right here. Okay. What about the opposite, maybe? Uh, Camera.zoom maybe divided by target zoom. <laughs> Still doesn't work out so well. Hmm. Eh, honestly. Well, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back in a second until I remember it or research about it for, but anyways. All right. So I looked it up and my bad, it's not log, <laughs> it's pow, power. Now, yeah, all right, fine. So it's cd.math.pow and what this needs, yeah, it needs to type X and Y. Okay. And of course it's the way that I've done it before, which is target zoom divided by camera.zoom. And hopefully this works. Let's see. Sig build one. And amazing. Look at that. It's pretty smooth. Now this is how I expect zoom to be like, honestly. I don't know about you, but there you go. Pretty lovely. Look at that. Amazing. This looks much more natural. To me, at least. So, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. There you go. Now I could also make a button that will go ahead and uh, let's see uh, make it full screen I think so toggle full screen basically to see full screen yeah there you go toggle full screen now we're gonna say if uh, toggle full screen yeah just gonna say toggle full screen okay nice there is a function for it nice amazing so uh, we're going to make a new constant. Const a full screen or actually toggle full screen key is equal to C dot key. Uh, let's go with F. I think it makes sense. Now, the, the my, my philosophy in designing this application is being an image viewer and being pretty good at being an image viewer, <laughs> if that makes sense. So right now in our in our application, since we don't have any GUI or nothing like that, and I I'd like to as much as possible to avoid GUI because it basically gonna take screen space, etc. You know, and GUI is not so efficient, you know, for visual data. So I'd like to as much as possible stay with exploiting the whole <laughs> controls in a pretty a clever way. 
hopefully. And yeah, taking the full screen just for actually seeing, viewing the image. But anyways, um, so toggle full screen key. Now, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. So, we could say if C dot is key pressed. Oopsies, what I'm doing here is key pressed. And let's say toggle, uh, full screen key. So if that's pressed, what we're going to say, we're going to say C dot toggle full screen. And there you go. Done, I guess. <laughs> let's see. Full screen and there you go. Now I'm full screen and hopefully that didn't uh, is actually oh my god <laughs> I don't think you're seeing it but actually hold on a second let me just make sure uh, honestly I don't know but just trust me that it works okay <laughs> so <laughs> let's not go crazy about this for now all right uh, but it works. But from now on, I want to use full screen just to make sure it is streaming pro like recording properly. I don't want it to crash again. <laughs> okay, so amazing. So we have added full screen too. What else? Now there's a lot else that I'd like to add, I guess. Oh yeah, there's one last thing that I think is pretty trivial and pretty cool to add is basically uh, to go to default zoom, you know? So basically when I'm going to press the middle mouse button, like, the, you know the mouse wheel? When there is, like, when you press it, I want it to go back to the default zoom. Because I think it's just so intuitive <laughs> that way, I guess. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So, const. Zoom, uh, default, but honestly, I don't want to make this a constant because it's not so configurable because it's not in the keyboard, it's uh, inside the mouse, you know, so it's in the mouse, so yeah, anyways, so I see that mouse button down, blah, 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 so I got to basically do the same thing here. Yeah, now if that's the case, uh, and of course we're gonna use instead of left, we're gonna use middle. Okay, so if that's the case, we're gonna say target zoom is equal to one, basically. Now I'm gonna do this before we apply the zoom and stuff like that. And let's go. Now. There you go. Now if I press the middle mouse button, there you go. Middle mouse. But notice one thing is that when I press the middle mouse button, but my mouse is right here, I want you to actually zoom default, but in that place. And somehow it works, somehow so, sometimes not. Because too simply, if I didn't use the mouse wheel so I can refocus the camera, it won't. So I should make sure to explicitly do that. So I'm going to go ahead, call the focus camera once again. And how are we going to do that? Well, here, right, before target zoom or after, I don't know exactly if it does make, like if it's something that... Yeah, I don't think it matters, honestly, for Zoom. But anyways, uh, let's have that uh, that way. Okay. Now, middle mouse button. There you go. Let's say I want to focus on that part. There you go. Let's say there. And let's say I want to rotate around to that point. Hold shift. Rotate. Amazing. Translate. <laughs> um... Zoom, zoom default, and let's go. It is just lovely, amazing, amazing. 
And yeah, I think that's the last feature maybe of today. <laughs> All right, so if you want the next part, let me know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, please make sure to go to the comment section or go to GitHub and open a poll request, uh, adding the stuff that you think is cool or doing an issue, like submitting an issue. Uh, and some, someone or me, I can actually go ahead and implement it if needed or if wanted. So yeah, pretty much. I think we're done today. There's a lot to improve, a lot to add, but for now, I think we're in a pretty lovely state to stop until later. So yeah, goodbye everyone.